Fatima's chatting with the Did village. You plan as I go. Making plans. They're scheming against me. Ooh, I'm not no. I'm talking to my Trying to figure out how old I am. Oh, my aunt, my mother asking how old you are. So I said forty-nine. Uh, she said that you're going, sir. So next year you're going to be. Daddy, not Fatima. Trying to tell the funeral home director. Daddy, che. Daddy, yes, ma'am. Miss Kaping, my aunt, sweetie. Not Daddy. You want some coffee? Hear them roosters. Folks, this is supposed to be my office. A quiet space where I can focus on my laptop. What's the table? <laughs> I got two babies. Loud Bisaya. Roosters. You see the stress I'm under? Folks, this is our spare bedroom, right? I call it my office. There ain't nothing in here but a, a basically brought a, a table in here like the dining room table I call it my office right has a door it's designed for like peace and quiet where I can edit some video right no in this house we have three bedrooms there's a living room there's a big bedroom over there there's a bedroom with a bunk beds where they get dressed and keep the babies clothes sort of the kids Kids' little room, I guess. All these rooms in the house. And Fatima, for some reason, thinks it's a wonderful idea. God, you can hear her talking to her family through the door. She thinks it's a great idea to get on the video with her family and then come into my office. And of course, you know, the kids don't want to come in here because we're in here, obviously. So here I am trying to concentrate on my laptop and I got this loud beside it going on. I've tried to explain to her how a microphone works. You don't have to scream. I truly think she don't need the phone. She could just go outside and talk and they could hear her down in the Visayas. And then you hear those roosters. I'm like, loud Visaya, loud chismas, roosters. I can't hear my video. And then I'm sitting there thinking, why is that a good idea <laughs> when you get on the phone with your family to come sit right next to me and scream in my ear? And I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. It's my fault though, because there is a lock on that door. All I got to do is click, click, and she got to go somewhere else. See the stress I'm under. But I got some real good news for you, baby. You want to hear the good news? Next, while, while you're gone, baby, I'm going to have a big uka uka sale. I'm going to thin out your clothes so you don't have so much, so much clothing clogging up your closet or your suitcase. When you come back, it's going to be nice, clean, wide open spaces, baby. No. Just like the plains in Montana. Baby, there's too many clothes here. We've got to get back down to the two suitcase rule. Baby, no, in your case, I think you're, you're about at the eight suitcase rule right now. No, you cannot. So big uka uka sale coming up next week, folks. But all the clothes I'm selling, they're a lot smaller than what you see here because she's put on a lot of weight, but she's still, still holding on to all them clothes that she used to be able to wear, hoping that she can get back down into them clothes. Baby, easy, easy on that chicken, baby. That's cruelty to chickens. So big uka uka still. I'm thinning out the kids' clothes, my clothes, everybody's clothes getting thinned out. Not my bag, not a, no, not my bag. Yeah, she got more more shoes, folks, than uh, 
the old Marcos had back in the 80s. Oh, shit, I, I guess I shouldn't talk about that anymore. My bad. She got so many shoes, so many pairs of shoes. I have to thin them out. Mwah. I gotta do it to you, baby. No. Here's your lesson about Filipinas. At least the Filipinas that I've always, that I've dated in my history of dating Filipinas. They won't throw anything out. Whether it's clothing, dishes, they don't throw anything away. It just, it doesn't get thrown away. Uh, so anyhow, while she's gone, I'm gonna take this time to do what I call the purge. No, Folks, the first thing I'm purging is the ref and the kitchen. I'm getting this place under control. I gotta get up in the back of these cabinets, see what she's put away that's molded, soured, rotted, whatever. First thing I gotta get is the kitchen. Squared away, clean, and under control. Purged. Once I get my kitchen in order, cause I can't do it when she's here. I can't do it when she's here. She'll hide stuff. She'll hide the bug I own, put it somewhere else. I get through cleaning and purging and the bug I own comes back. So after I get this purge, then I'm going after the clothing. It's just, it's too much stuff, folks. You know, when you, when you settle in one place, it's just human nature that we collect things. We don't get rid of things. Uh, but all these clothes that are too small for the babies, what are they doing? They're just sitting here taking up space when there are other children out there who can benefit from their clothing. I'm not the sentimental type that says, oh, that's Force G's socks from when he was two and a half. We have to keep the socks. No, give them to a baby who needs a pair of socks. It's just the way it is. You know, if they can't wear them, pass it on. She's not too happy about it. But we just, you can just show me stuff that you really, really want to keep and, uh, and I'll, I'll consider it. All of that. Honey. You have, you, baby, it's just too many clothes in there. We're not expeditionary. Honey, if you're, if you're a divorcer, I hope you're, you can experience that. There's a lot of clothes you want to try that, you want to try that, I want that, like that, like that. I understand that. And as long as they'll fit in two suitcases, that's fine. That's but, not it. That's, that's only... Anything that doesn't fit in two suitcases has to go. Two. Can fit that. No, no, no. You can't put all your shoes and all your clothes in two suitcases. No, not my clothes, not my bag, <laughs> not my shoes. <laughs> Just brace yourself. No, I like this. Brace yourself, baby. <laughs> Alright folks, so we're doing a repeat of the chicken soup, but I'm not going to put water in here today. Now she jumped the gun and put that in there. I'm going to put the vegetables down first, then the chicken. Put a little butter on top, a little bit of olive oil, turn it on. I'm not making soup today. I'm making more of a rotisserie with vegetables. It's going to be delicious. Now I would like to have some carrots and potatoes to go in this, but I don't have carrots and potatoes. What I have is bell peppers, onions, a little bit of basil, uh, tomatoes, garlic, and these peppers. It is going to be outstanding. Same deal. We will turn this on around 8 o'clock tonight and just wake up to a nice rotisserie chicken tomorrow for breakfast and lunch. Too easy. Now I got to reverse. Got the chicken on top of the vegetables. If you hear roosters in the background, it's because Fatima is talking to her family, and you will hear roosters. Just a little bit of cayenne pepper on that bird, a little bit of spice, just a little bit. Just a little bit of cayenne pepper. I don't have any Spanish paprika. If I did, I would paint that thing with Spanish paprika. Unfortunately, I don't have any. Now. A little bit of salt, not too much. There we go. Got a little salt in there. Just a little bit. There you go, look at that. A little bit of olive oil. Now the chicken's still got to thaw out, so I, I give it thaw out. And maybe I'll sprinkle a little black pepper on top of that. That's it, folks. 
too darn easy. So all my males out there, my bachelors, you don't you think you don't know how to cook? My goodness. Vegetables, olive oil, a chicken. Plug that thing in on the wall, wake up, and you got a great meal for your lady. Well, see that thing right there is sitting locked and cocked, folks. But look at that clock right there. I'm not even gonna plug it in until nine o'clock tonight. What you want, sweetie girl? Brownie. Oh, you want a brownie? Yeah. Okay, Papa get you a brownie. Now folks, you know next week, I'm gonna be uh, playing single dad. Uh, Mr. Mom, whatever you want to call it, right? In other words, the mom will be visiting her family down in the village. I'll be here with the babies. And it's just so funny how people these days are like, they doubt you as a father. You know what I mean? Everybody's like, well, who's going to take care of the kids? Who's going to watch the children? Like I'm, like I'm just a ghost or something. Who the hell do you think is going to watch the kids? Me, with my superior, superb parenting skills. It's like we fathers have been marginalized, you know, especially in the West. I was trying to shoot on that RX100, which occasionally I do, just to try to make that thing go to work. It just overheats and shuts down. Man, the most important thing about a camera is that the thing starts recording when you push the button. It don't matter the frame rate, the uh, the audio, I mean all these things are important. But all these things are irrelevant if that camera won't go to work when you push the record button. I mean imagine you're sitting there with the crappiest camera in the world from you know an old eight millimeter camcorder not that that's a crappy camera but you're sitting there with an eight millimeter sony handycam camcorder from 1995 versus the latest and greatest let's use canon r5 that has is notorious for overheating right and then shuts down and you film for a little bit and your brand new uh, you know, was it four thousand dollar R5, whatever it is, shuts down because of it's does a thermal shutdown and becomes a brick. And here you are with that whole handy cam, right? Shooting 480 or whatever it is. Guess guess who's getting the footage? Most important thing about a camera is for that thing to go to work. Yeah, it's the camera that you got in your hand. But the camera that's in your hand has to go to work when you hit that record button and not shut down after a few minutes of filming. Unacceptable in the year 2022. Now that old RX100 Mark V is several years old. But just an example, even the brand new cameras coming out that cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that'll do everything uh, under the sun don't mean nothing. If that thing's gonna do a thermal shutdown after a few minutes of filming junk useless unless you're in the Arctic Alaska in the Swiss Alps at 10,000 feet in the winter in the Rocky Mountains where the external temperature is gonna cool that thing down to the point that it'll go to work it's a useless camera that's it so if you're thinking about buying a new uh, camera system an expensive one at that you remember what I just told you a camera is useless if that thing does a thermal shutdown after a few minutes of filming it's a brick then you gotta sit there and wait for however long it takes at RX100 I don't know 20 minutes 30 minutes for the damn thing will cool down whatever it is useless so what do I do go pull out the old Sony camcorder eight-year technology my big Sony that having a little problems with the zoom, I'll admit, due to old age, a little arthritis in this focusing mechanism. But when I hit the button, that thing starts recording. It goes to work and it'll continue to record until the cows come home or the fat lady sings. Beats out the R5, beats out a ton of other brand new cameras, 
RX100, which is much newer technology than this thing, and they're shooting the same. This thing shoots 4K, 30, 100 megabits, so does that. This thing will last forever, that thing will last about 30 minutes. Enough of the camera jargon. I was talking about fathers being marginalized. That people are like, like question us as fathers. Oh my God, who's gonna take care of the kids while your wife's gone? Really? Have, have we fathers just allowed the stigma, is that the word I'm looking for? Or the perception that we can't take care of kids? It's a big problem of why the world is where it's at right now, is the absence of fathers and the absence of the authority of fathers to properly rule their kingdom, their household. Don't believe me? Just look at America, okay? Violence every day, shootings, school shootings, young people shooting young people, young, shoot, young people shooting old people, old people shooting young people. It all has to do with the absence of fathers because the minute you piss off your wife or your baby mama, now you can't see the kids but once every two weeks for a weekend. You become a weekend dad and you can't lay down the law. And then here you got an old single mom trying to raise three teenage boys. How did I get to talk? Oh, yeah. Because the old lady's going out of town next week going to see her family and I'm here with the kids. Folks, again, I'm going to demonstrate my superior, excellent, um, efficient parenting skills while my old lady is gone. You're going to be amazed. Some of you will be shocked. But believe it or not, we dads are quite capable of taking care of our children. Most of the times, oh, this is going to, this is going to cut deep. Most of the time, even better. Ooh, I know that cuts deep. Some of you moms out there, not taking anything away from you. But I'm not here representing you. I'm representing the men, the man, the king. That's who I'm representing. So anyhow, stay tuned. I might be a little slow about getting the videos out next week. Why? Because parenting comes first. I'm going to make sure they have a good time, make sure they got good food and everything else. Setting up the camera and all that will come second. But I'll try to get as much footage as I can to demonstrate what's going on around here in the absence of uh, wife number two over here. Just to give you a sneak peek about some of the things I'm going to be demonstrating. I'm going to demonstrate, I mean you've seen it a million times, my cooking skills, but preparing meal for the children. I'm going to show you how I can prepare meals and supervise the children at the same time. Laundry. Obviously, you have to do laundry. I'm going to demonstrate, and demonstrate those skills as well. We've got a washing machine here, clothesline out back, no problem. Okay, so everybody else suggested, you know, get Fatima a camera. Okay, yeah, tracking, folks. She's got her cell phone, but I'm sending her with the new GoPro Hero 10. And we dropped it down to 1080. So she shouldn't have the overheating problems. You know, I usually shoot 4K60. Thing gets too hot and shuts down. So I dropped it down to 1080. That way uh, the camera's not gonna get as hot. And also she has a lot more time on the memory cards. So I mean, I loaded her up. I don't, she's got a half dozen memory cards, um, hours upon hours of footage. And she knows how to use the GoPro, knows how to change out the cards, change the batteries. So she's, she's well versed on the GoPro. It just depends on what kind of footage she's going to bring back, you know, what we can chop up. But she is armed with a GoPro Hero 10 heading down to the village. So hopefully she gets a lot of good stuff. My only concern about using the GoPro or cell phone in the village is, you know, at nighttime, you know, things sort of get dark, right? And there's a lot of brownouts. So a lot of low light situations in the village. That GoPro falls apart at night. And she's got an iPhone 8 Plus. That thing's not great at night either. So that's my only drawback or my only concern about her camera equipment. I would send her with the RX100, which is great in low light. 
but it's not great on stabilization. The damn thing overheats and I, I just don't want to give her all those problems. I would rather her get good footage during the day with the GoPro, simplicity, good stabilization than for her to get all this shakiness and overheating problems. Uh, because if it does overheat on her, she'll probably just throw it in the bag and, and, and lose uh, interest in filming, which that's understandable. So there you go. Hopefully we're going to get some good village footage, welcome home footage. If she goes to work on the camera and has a discipline to carry that thing around and uh, hit the record button. Now folks, it looks like it's about to come a storm. I mean, it's gotten dark. Uh... It's already got a little bit of sprinkling going on, but it's like it's about to come some type of monsoon. Baby, can I ask you a question? Why, did, why is it so noisy when you talk to your family? I mean, it, it's like it's like you're shouting at the at the cell phone. You're shouting at the CP. I know you're so far, but it's not the distance between you and your family. It's the distance between your mouth and the microphone. You cannot hear it. Of course, G's gonna be just fine. Okay. If you want to see what's going on, just make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Called Overstay Road. Why I cannot call your cell phone? Now you can call, but maybe if we're out somewhere. You can just watch our videos. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. But his da his dance skills are inspired by Kalapu. Maybe he's the original inventor of the Halloween creeper. <gasps> baby, you know I'm in the YouTube business, right? Every day you know I'm, I'm going to be filming, but you don't so refuse to get dressed. It's so hot, it's so hot. It's not hot, I got the air can on. It's raining outside. Before, before. I've had several requests that you actually dress up, maybe put a bra on. Well, maybe not that, but for you to put some <laughs> nice clothes on. Alright baby, I got something serious to talk to you about. What? I just made the decision. 100% I'm buying that carbon fiber tripod. Baby, just yeah. oh. Oh. I'm bringing you live quality, not live, but quality entertainment. Risking my life in this lightning storm, holding this camera up. I'm standing yeah. in water and I look and I realize this is a steel tripod. I'm basically sitting there in the middle of a lightning storm holding a lightning rod saying please strike this camera and roast my ass. And I'm like okay let me set the tripod down on the wooden table and step back and step away. But I said that's craziness I never thought about that. You know and I'm holding it up and there's a light and I'm like you know what what if you're holding the tripod you're using it you know to get a higher angle you make contact with a light switch you're fried 220 volts here in the Philippines you're done that lightning I don't know millions of volts you're done I said this is no I no longer look at this thing and my other one as a tripod I look at them as lightning rods 
these are only acceptable to use with caution now you contrast that to my new carbon fiber tripod I'm about to pull the trigger on that don't conduct electricity unless there's something they got in line or something that I don't know about but that carbon fiber tripod will not conduct electricity so if I'm holding this thing up to get a high angle I accidentally make contact with a stray wire which here in the Philippines is quite common I'm not I'm not a dead man or if I'm out there in this lightning storm doing some storm chasing and that thing strikes the camera, it's not conducting the electricity down through the tripod, down through my body and blow out my left toe, my big toe. I, it's not happening. This has become a safety issue. Baby, I'm ordering that 40,000 peso carbon fiber tripod by Peak Design because my life is worth more than 40,000 pesos. You're going to order me a Toyota? No, I'm not ordering you the stinky fish. Um, That's, I don't think my life is worth that extra money there, but I definitely am worth that 40,000 pesos. 800 bucks on that tripod. I just never thought about it. I just never thought, hey fool, you're walking around holding this tripod, standing next to this tripod, holding on to this tripod and lightning can strike it and that's the end of me I mean that's written on my headstone this dude was trying to make a YouTube video now here he lays because he didn't have a carbon fiber tripod now I think I have justification that even you should tell me yes honey please go buy that carbon fiber tripod because I worry about your safety why are you going to why you need to you need that to when it rains, you use that? Yes, baby, listen. I, I can't wait to see it. I caught I a bolt. I never see that toy. I never see that you use that while it's raining. I just captured a bolt of lightning with the ND filter set at three. You should be able to see that bolt so clear. I'm so excited about downloading this Why footage. you need to go there? You know that it's lightning or like that, like that. Oh. Baby, I was storm chasing. I'm a storm uh, chaser. Why you need that? You know that. Uh, you know that. This is a too much bolt, too much like that, like that. It's so. You know what, baby? You are perfectly correct. You're absolutely correct. I am not going out there to film that anymore. Okay. Oh, now, wait. here's what I want you to do. Maybe grab grab a hold of this steel tripod here and take it out and set it right out there for me, and I'll wait here in the safety. Okay. Why I need to go there? That I'm not stupid. I. I think I hit. If I go there, I go die. Okay, yeah, because I got a steel tripod. I need a carbon fiber tripod. Here, go ahead, go ahead. Are you, you're that. Put your you hand right here. Make, Put your hand right here. You just make too much reason to buy that tripod, tripod, nayan. Man, not, my life isn't worth forty thousand pesos. Huh? Yeah, but of tripod, you can film while okay. it's not. They're all made out of metal. Okay, put your hand right here on the tripod. Just hold it here. Now, we're, oh. we're far from the window. Yeah, hold it right there. Now, be still. Don't Let me get over here. Just be still for one minute. Just wait. Just keep holding on to it. Let me get over here. Let me get a little bit further away from it. <laughs> okay, now take the tripod and go right out Why there. Why I need to go there? Because I need to get some footage, baby. Don't, don't go there. I'm a filmmaker. Just I'm a storm me. chaser. Oh, folks, it's coming back. Easy, baby. I need to you, When you get to your village in a few days, you can eat all the Toyo you want. You going give me money to buy Toyo? No. Uh, so how come I can eat a Toyo that I don't have money? You go to your cousin's house or your auntie's house. Whoever's got the Toyo, you go over there and nibble a little so, bit. But, <laughs> you act like a rat, baby. You just sneak around at night. Get a nibble here, nibble there. Nobody knows you're there. And then you get Nina, and you guys go down to the to the creek, and you get them free little tiny freshwater shrimp. You love those. <laughs> Baby, only the best for you. I'm talking about a life or death safety issue, an occupational hazard. I could get electrocuted in a lightning storm unless I buy a forty thousand peso carbon fiber tripod. I don't need it. You don't think my life is worth forty thousand pesos? You, you know, you're not stupid. You're not. You're think ahead. You have a brain. 
Why should you go there if they Hey, what if I'm carrying a tripod around and some wire sticking out of a power pole and it, it electrocute? This is the Philippines. I saw you're just making a reason, Marquitos. You just. Okay, you take a walk with me. You take a walk with me and there's some wires outside. I want you to touch your finger on it. Tell me. Why should I touch that? It's, it could it, accidental. I might touch it with the tripod. Uh, I have a. Either reason. way. Oh. Uh, uh, my life could be saved by a carbon fiber tripod and I'm go get that bolt. I'm pulling the trigger. Right. Go get the go, go get all the bolt in here, put the one that the one that It's not the bolts, <laughs> baby. Look, it's the it's the it's the uh, shaft. You feel that shaft right there, that that's metal. Go get this. Go get the uh, I am, it's called a carbon fiber tripod. No, 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 no. Uh, 40,000 no, pesos on the Zada. Wood, the wood in the, no, the wood and transfer in here. Baby, I can't put bamboo. to <laughs> solve the world's problems with bamboo. Yeah. You can make a bamboo chair, a bamboo hut, bamboo table. Fat fish, Josh! <laughs> the bamboo, bamboo tripod is not going to be sturdy enough for my filmmaking activities. See the stress I'm under, folks? This girl's worried about eating stinky fish. What about me? Who's gonna worry about the foreign guy's safety, health, and well being when I'm trying to film out in the lightning storm? And I'm, I'm telling you, I, I gotta go because I'm so excited. Because if you capture that lightning through the ND filter, it's gonna be so clear. I had the game set at zero, ND jacked up all the way, uh, 120 on the shutter speed. 4K 30. I am hoping that that bolt of lightning uh, is a million dollar shot. I risk my life to get it for you. And I got a, I got a wife here that don't don't care about my safety. Hey, it wasn't the same color. Baby, carbon fiber tripod, baby. If that uh, just only a uh, five thousand pesos, okay, but that's forty five, boy. Almost fifty? No, forty thousand. Free shipping. I get free shipping. The shipping is just only little bit, then. I know, but it's free. All right. If that's only five thousand, it's okay. But that's forty-five, forty. All right, I got I got plans to buy two of them though. Ah, ito. Mag orong kada market kasi wag ka nang bibili. All right, I say two, you say zero. Let me just buy one, and everybody wins. I got an itchy trigger finger, baby, on that mouse. So click, 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 click. Oh, dangle, 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 yeah, mouse. Yeah, dangle computer. Look at this right here. Oh, yeah, look at that chicken. Chicken just breathing.